on March 21st, it is very better day to weather some day. So World Down Syndrome Day is actually Sunday on the 21st. Yep. And why is it March 21st? Because it's very important to down the drum. Why? Oh, I have down the drum. Well, you, how do you get down syndrome? I, I, I how do you get down the drum? I, you have I get a three extra chromosome. You have an extra 21st chromosome. So normally you have 23 pairs that make up 46 chromosomes. A person with Down syndrome has an extra 21st chromosome, a little bit of extra love, right? Right. And therefore you have three 21st chromosomes. So World Down Syndrome Day is March 21st. How about right. that? I love it. So we have a four-part celebration today. Part one is entitled, What is Down Syndrome? Right. And we're going to have some special guests from the National Down Syndrome Society talking about what is Down Syndrome. Then at 2.30, we're going to switch over, and the second show is I Am Down Syndrome. Right? Right. And we have a very special video to show you, about a 20-minute video of self-advocates with Down syndrome. Many of them are your friends, right? Right, my friends too. And many of them are entrepreneurs, in, uh, introducing themselves and telling you where they're from and about themselves so you can meet people with Down syndrome. And then at 3 o'clock, we're holding a special show of our Spreading Happiness show. Spread Happiness. Right? And then at 3.30, we're going to wrap it up with an online dance party All right. led by John. So, let's get into it. Do we have uh, Colleen available? And our technicians are shaking their heads saying Colleen is not available. Okay, so uh, we, we will start the session talking about um, what is Down syndrome. And so, is Colleen available now? Yes. Coming up. Okay. Um, we need to see Colleen on the screen. Can you see? Can you hear me, Mark? She's on. There you are, Colleen. Do you hear us? Oh, perfect. Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys for so, having me here today. I'm Colleen, so excited. Welcome. Colleen she is with the National Down Syndrome Society, which is the world's leading advocacy group for the human rights of people with Down syndrome. Did I say that right? Yeah, you did a good job, Mark. Um, so uh, Colleen is going to talk a little bit about what is Down syndrome and how you get Down syndrome and what effects it has, right? Right. All to you, Colleen. Perfect. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for having me here today, uh, and thank you for the lovely introduction. I am Colleen Hatcher. I am the Senior Manager of Community Relations at NDSS. As Mark said, NDSS is the leading human rights organization for all individuals with Down syndrome. So World Down Syndrome Day is one of our organizations and my personal favorite days of the year. Um, NDSS envisions a world in which all people with Down syndrome have the opportunity to enhance their quality of life, realize their life aspirations, and become valued members of welcoming communities. We talk about our, the work that we do by focusing on key areas of programming, which include resources and support, policy and advocacy, and community engagement. Um, within these core areas, NDSS engages in advocacy at the federal, state, and local levels, which the Cronin gentlemen are very involved with, and we very much appreciate their support, as well as our initiatives and programs that provide information, resources, support and engagement opportunities for the community, which includes individuals with Down syndrome, families, practitioners, affiliates, and the general public with events like these. So thank you all so much for having us today. We're thrilled to be here to share some information about Down syndrome in celebration of World Down Syndrome Day. 
So as John and Mark earlier said, um, each person has chromosomes that determine our traits. I have them, you have them. Typically, developing individuals are born with 46 chromosomes. Individuals with Down syndrome are born with one extra chromosome. So Down syndrome occurs, as John said earlier, when an individual has a full or partial extra copy of the 21st chromosome. So that's why we celebrate World Down Syndrome Day on March 21st each year, because it is three, the third month of the year, and 21 is the date. And individuals with Down syndrome have three copies of that 21st chromosome. According to the CDC, approximately one in every 700 babies in the U.S. is born with Down syndrome, making it the most common chromosomal condition. We estimate that there are, there are about 6,000 babies with Down syndrome born in the U.S. each year. There, I won't go into too many details, but there are three types of Down syndrome. 90% of individuals who have Down syndrome have trisomy 21. That occurs when the extra 21st chromosome is replicated in every cell of the body. In translocation, which accounts for about four cases of Down syndrome, the total number of chromosomes in the cells remains 46. However, there is an additional full or partial copy of the 21st chromosome uh, when it attaches to another chromosome. And finally, mosaic Down syndrome is diagnosed when there are two types of cells, some containing the usual 46 and some containing 47. These cells with 47 chromosomes contain that extra 21st chromosome. Mosaicism is the least common form of Down syndrome and accounts for only about 1% of all cases. Regardless of what type of Down syndrome a person might have, all people with Down syndrome have an extra critical portion of the 21st chromosome present in all or some of their cells. The cause of the extra full or partial chromosome is still unknown. There's no definitive scientific research that indicates that Down syndrome is caused by any environmental factors or the parent's activities before or during pregnancy. Down syndrome can be diagnosed before the baby is born or after the baby is born. Parents can get prenatal screening or diagnostic tests while the baby is in utero to determine if their child will have Down syndrome. If doctors believe the baby will have Down syndrome after it's born, they perform a chromosomal analysis called a karyotype to confirm the diagnosis. To attend, excuse me, to obtain a karyotype, doctors draw a blood sample to examine the baby's cells. A few common, of, or excuse me, a few of the common physical traits of Down syndrome are low muscle tone, small stature, an upward slant of the eyes, and a single deep crease across the center of the palm. Every person with Down syndrome is a unique individual, just like everyone else in the world, and they may possess these characteristics to different degrees or not at all. I think it's really important to note that Down syndrome is named after the English physician John Langdon Down, who published information about Down syndrome in the 19th century. It is not meant to be a derogatory comment about individuals with Down syndrome. It is named after the individual who published information. Now on to our preferred language. NDSS has a preferred language guide which provides information on how to refer to individuals who have Down syndrome. I'm gonna highlight some very important ones for you today as you go out and celebrate World Down Syndrome Day. So the Down syndrome community prefers to use person-first language. Instead of saying a Down syndrome child or a Down's child, you would say a child with Down syndrome. NDSS, of course, as long as um, I've as well as John's crazy socks, strongly condemn the use of the R word in any context. Um, when we hear of, of individuals who are celebrities or members of Congress who use the R word, NDSS reaches out to them and, in, and shares more information about why that word is offensive. And we encourage them to, to meet with our team and our advocates like John. And finally, some countries across the world refer to Down syndrome as Down's syndrome with an apostrophe S. This preferred usage, or the preferred usage in the United States is just to say Down syndrome. And then wrapping up about the opportunities that are out there for people with Down syndrome, there are so many. Every day we expand our knowledge of how individuals with Down syndrome learn and the best ways to support their development. Scientific research is constantly yielding new information about the causes of Down syndrome and, and any associated conditions. NDSS and many local and national organizations uh, advocacy organizations are working tirelessly to promote legislation that advances the rights of people with disabilities. 
All of these efforts have opened up many doors for people with Down syndrome to pursue the, their dreams. Most individuals with Down syndrome, like my colleague Charlotte, who you'll hear from later, are included in their general education classes with their typically developing peers. Many individuals with Down syndrome also graduate from high school, like John Cronin, and go on to post-secondary programs, like my colleague Charlotte, who is uh, currently studying at George Mason University in Virginia. Individuals with disabilities now have more opportunities for employment in their community. I mean, just look at what John and Mark are doing at John's Crazy Socks. These opportunities are diverse in nature with individuals with Down syndrome working in finance, sports, entertainment, fashion, sock companies, customer service, and many more. And we love supporting our business owners with Down syndrome, just like John. Every day we see more businesses opening uh, and providing opportunities to individuals with Down syndrome. John's Crazy Socks does a fantastic job sharing these shops and giving you an opportunity to support small businesses run by individuals with Down syndrome. Just like their typically developing peers, most individuals with Down syndrome have active social lives with friends with and without disabilities. And many people with Down syndrome live on their own and even get married. Due to advances in medical technology, individuals with Down syndrome are even living longer than ever. More and more Americans are interacting with individuals with Down syndrome, increasing the need for widespread public education, acceptance, and events like today. Thank you, John and Mark, so much for inviting NDSS to participate in this amazing event. We are so excited for World Down Syndrome Day in just two days. So I'll turn it back over to you guys and thank you again. So. Uh, thank you very much, Colleen. That was great, right? Um, so, you have Down syndrome. Right? I do, Dad. And what do you say about Down syndrome? I have Down syndrome. Down syndrome never holds me back. No, it never holds you back, does it? And much of what we want to do is show what people with Down syndrome can do how much they can achieve, right? Right. So we do that by hiring people with differing abilities and with Down syndrome. We do that by putting you out front. What's your title? A Chief Happiness Officer. Chief Happiness Officer. And you're the face of the business, right? Yes, I am. And you go make speaking engagements? Yes, I go speaking engagements everywhere we go, like Canada. Um, Monterey. Uh, right, we've been to Mexico. Monterey, uh, the US, Portland. Right. Um, all of that to show what people with differing abilities can do. Right. And part of what we do is uh, we work and support other entrepreneurs who happen to have Down syndrome. And as Colleen noted, John's not a Down syndrome entrepreneur. He's an entrepreneur who happens to have Down syndrome, right? Right. So we work with a lot of other groups, right? Like your friend Blake. Yes. What does Blake own? Blake owns uh, a place new shack. He's selling up a snow cone uh, right, right in uh, Sanger, Texas. Right. Plus, there's Coletti's Cookies out of Boston. Oh, uh, yeah, it's Gabby's Grounds. Grounds. Uh, Harrison's Each Bomb Times. Uh, right. uh, uh, Harbor Hill Coffee. Harbor Hill Coffee. Um, there's, um, let's see, um, Allison's Doggy Delights. Yeah, right? it's great. Um, there are a lot of great businesses that are owned and led by people with Down syndrome who are all just showing the world, look what we can do, right? Right. And that's pretty awesome, isn't it? I um, pretty good. Right? Let's see. And what questions do people want to know? Well, let's, let's start with some of the adjustments that happen, and it's an adjustment in mindset. Um, when John was born, many very well-meaning people said to us, oh, we're so sorry. Oh, that's so bad. Or, well, you and your wife, Carol, you're strong. You'll be able to support this. Um, 
And, and we know they meant well. But why was there any reason to be sad? Look at the joyous life, right? Right. It's wonderful. And, and, I, I, right. And some of this um, is runs through the medical community. Uh, we had a doctor. Uh, we should talk maybe a little bit about when you were born. Right. Um, we did not know John was going to be born with Down syndrome, right? Um, so we found out when he was born. And, and the medical staff, the nurse and the first doctor, used language like, well, you know, might have a slight case or a mild case of Down syndrome. You either do or you don't. Um, and many people born with Down are born with significant illnesses or medical challenges. So John here, um, on day three of his life, had intestinal bypass surgery. We brought a priest in to baptize him right. because we did not know if he would survive the operation. And before he was three months old, he had open heart surgery. And we had a cardiologist say offhandedly, you know, they try to save most of these babies now. But this was our son. And he survived that operation. And we, we go and speak to a lot of groups, right? And we share, you know, what possibilities did this baby have? Born with Down syndrome, needing two surgeries. And what's possible? Exactly. He could grow up to change the world, right? Absolutely, I, I did. You've testified twice before the Cong U.S. Congress. You've spoken at the United Nations. You've spoken before major corporations like uh, Microsoft, Ernst & Young, uh, Campbell's. We're doing something with IBM shortly. Look at what people can do. Look at what people with Down syndrome can accomplish, not what they can't. Focus on the possibilities, right? Right. Very cool. I'm really cool. I, I, it's very special. Uh, I, I always try to have a down and that. Yeah. And it, it's wonderful. And so I everyone can do. How wonderful it is. I, I, I saw it myself and, and all, 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 all the people around. Uh, all, all around. I, it, it, it's amazing. Uh, this is very cool, right, John? Yeah. Um, so, let's see what we have going on. Um, I'm looking to see if we have questions out there from people. Um, because now is a good time to answer the questions uh, that people might have about uh, Down syndrome and the world Down syndrome celebration. Uh, what do people do to celebrate World Down syndrome? Day? What do they wear? I don't wear, I wear a crazy sock, like a Down syndrome sock. Right. I, I, it's so cool. And you know why? Because a little bit that the socks yeah. kind of look like the chromosomes. Yes. You ever see the microscopic pictures of chromosomes? But the crazy socks also celebrate the variety right. and vitality that people with Down syndrome bring to the world. Does that sound good to you? I'm really good at that. Um, and in past Down syndrome days, where have we been the last couple of years? So, so last year we had the pandemic. And everything was shut down. But the year before, we were you were on TV. You were at uh, the Today Show, right? With the yes. National Down Syndrome Society. Ah, uh, yes. And the year before that, you were at the United Nations. Right. For a celebration of World Down Syndrome Society. That's pretty cool, huh? Cry, Dad. You like that? I love it. <laughs> um, okay. So, you know, when you want to know, 
what people with Down syndrome can do. Um, we might take a little pause real quick and realize because we're having some technical difficulties. Okay, we're going to pause and restart our show.